Hello and welcome to Street View. In this video I'm going to talk about one of the most important aspects of all photography and that's composition. However, I'm not going to talk about the rule of thirds and what you should and shouldn't do as regards how theory goes. That sort of information is easily available on a simple Google search. We don't view the world through a grid or a defined way of seeing. And as creative photographers, we're looking for a visual harmony and not just groups of things. I'm going to examine a few pictures and break them down into their component parts, looking in detail at how they came together and why they work as compositions. I'll discuss the thinking behind each shot and how they were visualised. All this is with a view to how you can apply the same thinking to your pictures and what to consider when you're shooting the streets. Much of the time we don't have the luxury of being able to spend as long as we wish carefully framing an image in the viewfinder. Often we'll find ourselves in point and click territory. However, even if we've only got a few moments, there are compositional things we can do in that time. And with experience comes the ability to almost instinctively know what our framing should be and what we should include and leave out in an image. I think your framing can become almost second nature. While I like the LCD monitors on the backs of cameras, I prefer to use the electronic viewfinder when I'm composing an image. I want to cut down on the amount of distractions around whatever I'm trying to photograph. And I want to be able to concentrate wholly on what I want in the image. And I find that the EVF helps me to do that. It's important to recognize how quickly your framing can change based on your movements. Whether it's left, right, or up or down, any slight adjustment can affect your composition. We must make a habit of looking at the whole frame and not just the main subject or focal point, as even peripheral objects can add or subtract from the picture's impact. Let's go and have a look at a few examples and I will highlight some compositional techniques. This picture has a sort of cinematic look. The area around the central point is like a giant aperture waiting to close in on the figure. The industrial look and feel of this particular bridge certainly lends itself to the more dramatic. We have all the ironwork, the ladders and the pillars coming out of the water. The fragile appearance of the figure walking through the light increases the dominance of the structure. It's also an example of sub-framing, of which a bit more later. The areas under bridges are pretty good hunting grounds for film noir type shots. Even at night they are quite well lit and you can find some great shadows. Shooting at night with a handheld camera and a high ISO means there's likely to be some grain in the image, but this can help to give it a more gritty feel. There is often a payoff in photography, especially shooting at night, but sometimes you can turn this to your advantage. The focus here is how the small central subject area has the maximum effect. The main focal point doesn't have to be the largest part of the composition, as long as it's given due prominence. This picture wouldn't have worked as well in colour, as the yellow of the light was really the only one. And this picture is also a good example of how you can find a scene or backdrop that you want to use and how you can incorporate other elements within it. In the spring and summer, the sun is higher and brighter and the shadows are stronger and deeper. And of course, they're in plentiful supply in places like towns and cities. While on one of my long photo walks through the city of London one warm summer day, I noticed this woman coming towards me. Even though at the time I was focusing on black and white photography, the luminous colour of her flowing dress piqued my interest. My thinking was that I had to isolate her and try to capture her against a dark background in order to maximise the effect. I had just walked through this area and noticed the triangle of strong light penetrating the deep shadow. The electric light was a nice addition and I thought the shadow on the road from the street sign looked a bit quirky. With my camera set to a high shutter rate, I wasn't going to miss the moment. All that could go wrong, I thought, is that she might suddenly cross the road if she saw me waiting with my camera. A little side note here, always try to keep a low profile when you're shooting the streets if you can. See my top tips video for more on this. The use of negative space here is key as it completely isolates the figure. The deep black here is perfect as it accentuates both her look and her demeanour. She has a languid and ethereal appearance which reflected the oppressive heat of the city. It looks like she's almost dragging that shape of light with her through the impenetrable darkness. It's always worth thinking about how you can use large areas of shadow or colour in your compositions. They can not only add impact but can sometimes help to frame your subjects. Much of my work has featured a lone figure in the urban landscape, often photographed against a minimalist backdrop. Here's an example taken from a walkway in the city of London. Sadly, it no longer exists as they tore it down. 
This picture shows how effective subframing can be, where one or more elements are framed by another within the composition. I was initially attracted by the lines of shadow created by the railings, but saw the potential of framing a subject in the street below. The chap in the picture had obviously come out of his office for a cigarette break, and I was able to adjust my position to frame him just as I wanted. He spotted me, so perhaps he was enjoying the moment. Looking for sub-framing ideas in your compositions can bring out real creativity in you. This is another example of how the main subject can be quite small in the frame but have a powerful presence and how you might have to alter your position to get the desired finish. This scene was too flat when I first saw it. I liked the colour but it wasn't interesting enough on its own. I could see where the sun was and worked out where it would have to be to have more impact at a different time of day. We have to think about the position and the angle of the sun in all of our outside photography and especially when shooting the streets. When I did return, I could see that the scene looked quite different and the shadows gave it a more abstract look. However, it still lacked something. It needed another shape in the foreground. I tried a walking passerby, but the shape wasn't interesting enough. There are always plenty of cyclists around, so I waited for one of these. The image works quite well in black and white too. There are those who believe that a creative vision can't be taught and it's something you either have or you don't have. I disagree and think the eye can be trained through practice, experience and through learning some basic elements of composition. Self-analysis is important because we must be capable of acknowledging where our pictures can be improved. I think it's a good idea to allow yourself some time between when you take your pictures and when you come to assess them. This helps to remove any emotional attachment you might at first have for them and allows you to be more objective. It's easy to get too close to our work when any honest appraisal can be difficult. I hope watching this has been interesting for you and I hope it helps improve your pictures and take your street photography to the next level. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed and if you're new here please do subscribe to help me grow the channel. As ever let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. To see more of my work visit my website at www.rupertvandervelde.co.uk and check out my book Fine Art Street Photography available at Amazon.